this is where we're gonna do a photo shoot. Hey, welcome back to another day in my life. Last time I did a video like this, I had so much fun bringing you along for it. This morning I went to the gym and now I'm all freshed up, ready to tackle the day. Come with me, I wanna show you something. I'm gonna put an ND filter on this clip. Give me one second. Is that better? I feel like it's a little bit better. When I'm not too sure about lighting or a frame, I'm just gonna take out my SD and give it a little edit and I'll be right back. Imagine if I just filmed everything and it looks like shit, then that's a bit of a waste of time. So I graded this piece of footage a little bit, but yeah, I think it looks good. So I just received the package and this is a pretty exciting one. It's something I have never owned, never seen and never used before. Weapon of choice. I show you what else is in this box because it's pretty exciting. I want to thank our sponsor Logitech for spoiling me with all these goodies and I cannot wait to set this all up. I am so excited about this one. This is the MX Creative Console. It's gonna spice up not only the look of my desk but also make my workflow a whole lot more fast. But first there's something else in the box as well and that is a new keyboard, a new mouse. This is the MX Master 3S. And I was due for a new mouse, don't hate on me, but I used to use, and I still use, my touchpad for editing. Ergonomical, ergonomical, ergon ergonomical, ergonomical lifesaver. Next, the MX Bryo, and this is a webcam. Okay, I need to sit down for this. We're gonna install it together. Ow. Oh. Do you know when your finger gets stuck in your tripod? consists out of two items, the MX Creative keypad and the MX Creative dial pad. And I find it so handy that these are just two separate items because that way I can still customize my desk space the way I want. So this is super easy and simple to set up, so let's do it together. I'm gonna customize all the buttons on it and I feel like this is the just most satisfying part about the Creative console and I've just connected the keypad with a USB-C cable to my laptop. This is already the pre-made profile for the general settings, uh, but I'm just gonna add an extra page. I also want to add all the applications I use on a daily basis. So I'm just gonna drag it open application. Adobe Lightroom Classic, of course. Look how cool it looks on that little keypad. It looks so cool. It's so satisfying. But I don't like the system preferences button so I'm gonna customize it. I do that by just clicking on top of it. Then you can see here the icon button. I'm just gonna screenshot the actual setting button here at the bottom. But why does this feel illegal for some reason? Okay, done, save. Yes, we've got a settings button. And I want this button to be the first. So I'm just gonna drag it to number one and I can just skim through them by pressing the buttons. These little fellas, they work perfectly together with Adobe Creative Suite and other tools. So for my photography, I always edit in Lightroom Classic. So this is gonna make it possible for me to have Photoshop, DaVinci, Lightroom, all at my fingertips. And I've already pre-made this one myself. So this is the first page. It has all the basic things I always need in every edit session, like develop mode, masking, before and afters, reset photo, and even rating my photos. Then on the second page, I've got all my tools. And I've spent some time on customizing the background and the font colors and everything. I've also done the same for Photoshop. So everything is very easy to find. It speaks for itself. I've just connected the dial pad with just Bluetooth. It's honestly so simple. As you can see here, all the buttons have already a function, but I do want to change a couple things. So firstly, I think it'd be so nice if this zoom button will actually become an exposure button. And I'm just gonna drag it in. Here on the bottom left, I want to change that to a before and after. I think there is an action for that as well. Perfect, I'm just gonna drag it in. And if you know me, you know that I love my before and after, so this button is made for me. Okay. Undo and redo, that's already super handy. Then I want to change the bottom right button to a crop tool. Ah, crop tool, drag it in. I hate ASMR so bad, but I just have to, you just have to listen. It sounds so satisfying. Okay. 
then the dial pad also has an actions ring and that is the bottom right button and as you can see it pops up with an action ring wherever my mouse is and then I can skip a song or even open up ChatGPT. So how can we put the Creative Console Lightroom profile to the test? ChatGPT came with an answer and that is You should do a photo shoot and create some new photos to edit. This way you'll have fresh materials to truly test the Creative Console Lightroom profile and see how it enhances your work. Okay, I guess ChatGPT has spoken. Let's go and do a photo shoot. And all of a sudden we're in a garage and this is where we're gonna do a photo shoot. We've got a Pontiac right here and it's gonna be amazing for portrait photography. This location reminds me of one of my first photo shoots I did with my sister. These are the photos and yeah, we're gonna do it for around two. Let's get into it. I don't know if you've seen this photo before, but I took this in a workbench at a sort of a similar garage. And then I remembered how cool is fog and smoke. So I brought my little smoke machine and we added it to the photos and it's gonna look so cool. Gotta try new things. in my cute little office space slash bedroom. <laughs> my aim for this photo shoot was to create a vintage looking set of photos. So let me know in the comments down below if you feel like I did a good job. As I promised you, we're gonna edit some photos using the Creative Console. And I've made a profile with all my Lightroom settings. And now we're gonna put it to the test. And let's be honest, it makes me feel like a DJ. And I'm gonna be editing this photo. So I'm gonna click on develop mode on the keypad and we're good to go. The cool thing is about this setup is that I don't have to scroll around or click around with my mouse or my keyboard. I have everything here right where I need it to be. So the first thing I always do is give the photo a crop. So I'm gonna click on crop on my keypad and I love a two by one crop. So I'm click on that one, bam done and what i actually like i forgot to tell you is that i can scroll through my library down here just by this dial button and even rate the ones i want to edit so currently we're editing this one so i'm going to give it five stars it makes my sorting process a whole lot easier then to start off i'm going to select one of my presets and i'm going to go for 90s baby i'm working on a new preset pack that is especially for portraits so let's put this preset to the test firstly this photo is way too underexposed now so i'm going to bring up the exposure by scrolling up this button right here on the dial pad like that and then by clicking onto the action ring I can see all the basic adjustments I can make my highlights are way too exposed so I'm gonna bring up the action ring and then bring down the highlights like that nice actually I want to bring up my shadows as well so I'm gonna click on my before and after button my favorite feature so this is before and that is after at the moment. By the way, if I don't like my edit, I can just click on reset image and we're back to square one. I feel like I wanna add some masks to this photo. So I'm gonna click on masking on the keypad and then I wanna add a linear gradient from the side and then bring down the exposure. Yes, I like it a lot. Then I wanna do a tiny bit of skin retouching in Photoshop, so I'm gonna click on open in Photoshop. All right, now we're into Photoshop and I'm just gonna zoom into my photo by using the dial pad. So I'm gonna zoom in 
Um, and then I want to do some spot healing. I always do minimal adjustments when it comes to skin retouching. And then I'm going to reduce the brush size by heading to my keypad and then using the scroll button on my dial pad to make the brush smaller. Like that. Okay, when my photo is done, I'm gonna click on save on my keypad. Now I've got my skin retouched version in Lightroom and I think the photo is pretty much done. So I'm gonna click on export on the keypad. Uh, export settings, yep, all done. And that's pretty much it for the creative console. It's been so much fun having a play around with it. It's definitely different than what I'm used to, but I'm always open for new, just things that can improve my workflow. But I've noticed that it's so easy to integrate into your workflow. It's very user-friendly and especially since I can use the Logi app, I can customize all the buttons so it feels like I can really make it my own. By the way, if you want to spice up all the custom buttons a little bit more, there's also a marketplace on which you can find endless amounts of buttons or plugins for the Creative Console. I am actually forgetting a very important detail and that is that the Creative Console comes with an exclusive offer of a three month subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. I think that is it. If you have any further questions, just please ask them down below and I really I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and I also hope to see you at my next one. Okay, bye bye!